Hi, Michelle Glass here. Um, we are starting our Lecture 3, Chapter 3 series. I have this one divided up into two parts. So we are looking here at Part 1, which our subject here is the cell membrane. So we're going to be focusing first on the anatomy of the cell membrane and then moving on to the physiology of the cell membrane. All of this is listed out for you throughout your Chapter 3. So look at your module headings to find out which pages to read. And then from there, we'll pick up other details of the cell as we progress into part two of our chapter three. So our topic here is the cell membrane, and this really deserves um, its own discussion because the cell membrane is that outermost border of the cell. And we see this, of course, for human cells, which are animal cells, but we see this with um, actually all cell types. So this is universal. So if you're going to be taking a microbiology class and you study um, bacteria or fungi or other protists, you'll see that the cell membrane uh, information that we study here is applicable to all of those cell types as well as plants and um, other organisms uh, not listed, which I've pretty much covered most in my little uh, discussion here. The signature feature of the cell membrane or its signature job um, is that it is going to regulate what gets in and out of the cell. And so what we see is that it's making this border, keeping the fluid inside of the cell, separate from the fluid outside of the cell. So we have a name for that fluid inside of the cell. We call it the intracellular fluid which we can abbreviate ICF, and that's typically how I will refer to it in this course. Um, but we also can uh, use the term cytosol to describe this fluid component inside of the cell. All of the fluid that we find surrounding that cell is called the extracellular fluid, or the ECF, um, in the human body then, or in other complex uh, multicellular animals, we can call that fluid surrounding the cell the interstitial fluid. Um, you've probably heard of that before. I typically will just refer to it by its abbreviation ECF uh, throughout the course. And then again, the job of that cell membrane is to actually um, regulate what's getting in and out of the cell. And by doing that, then it is making the fluid inside of the cell different from the fluid outside of the cell. Both the uh, ICF and the ECF are aqueous-based solutions. Aqueous means watery. And we know that water is our universal solvent. So that tells us that it's not just water. Um, you're going to see water with electrolytes, which are ions dissolved. You'll see nutrients in suspension. You'll see proteins in suspension. You might have gases, oxygen, carbon dioxide. You might have waste materials. And it's the job of the cell membrane to really um, maintain that internal environment of the cell and regulate what's having access to the inside of the cell. And in doing so, then it's going to make the ICF different composition from the ECF. So really its key job is to be this border and to regulate entry and exit of the cell. And it's going to do that based on its molecular chemistry. So we're going to be looking at that um, as we progress through. And the significance here is, of course, that this is maintaining the homeostasis of the cell. And in the case of our bodies, then not only is it regulating the homeostatic composition of the inside of the cell, but it's also helping to regulate the homeostatic composition of the extracellular fluid. When we look at our cell membrane anatomy, we will see that lipids and carbohydrates and um, proteins are all going to be important molecular components. When we discuss the lipids that are part of the cell membrane anatomy, we have mentioned already both phospholipids and cholesterol as important in our cell membrane. We'll see that the phospholipids will actually make that membrane semi-permeable, and then we'll talk about the cholesterol molecule as adding stability to the membrane, and we'll go through that again as we progress. Carbohydrates we will see in the cell membrane anatomy, probably most importantly as part of that glycocalyx structure, which is going to be um, having lots of different functions, and we'll mention that at the very end. And then we'll see proteins having lots of important roles, including forming our protein channels. We'll see proteins involved as part of the glycocalyx. 
We'll also see proteins um, acting as those little name tag markers on the cells, and we've already mentioned that that is the job of the glycoprotein molecule, so we'll see that here as well. So let's take a look first at our phospholipids. Our cell membrane can be described as a cell membrane. It can be described as a plasma membrane. It can be described as the plasma lemma. You can also describe the cell membrane as a phospholipid bilayer. So let's look first at that phospholipid molecule in more detail. So the phospholipid molecule you can see here in my drawing is going to have a phosphate head. The phosphate head is going to be a polar region or a hydrophilic region, so that means it's water loving. And then we're going to have what's described as the lipid tail. The lipid tail is the hydrophobic component. So our phospholipid molecule has a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic component. So this is going to be important. It's described as a bilayer, so that means we're going to have two layers of our phospholipid molecules making up that cell membrane. So here would be like the first layer, and then we're going to draw in our second layer, and you're going to make sure that those lipid tails are oriented in toward each other, and this then is going to create what we describe as a hydrophobic lipid layer. And this is that significant aspect that's keeping the fluid the polar water and the other polar dissolved molecules, dis dissolved solutes, from um, being able to just move across the membrane without any kind of control or regulation. So water can actually move through this phospholipid um, fatty um, hydrophobic layer, but um, it's gonna move pretty slowly through that layer. If you want large movements of water, then you have to have what is described as a water channel. Um, so most things in the body, most things are gonna be polar because of the aqueous nature of our body fluids. And so the polar materials, polar sol solutes, will not be able to cross easily through that hydrophobic lipid layer. So that's how we're creating this nice barrier, making the ICF and the ECF separate. So if you're a polar molecule, you're not gonna be able to cross on your own through the phospholipid bilayer. If you're a charged ion, you're not gonna be able to move across the phospholipid bilayer on your own. Um, if you are lipid soluble, if you are nonpolar, then you will cross through that phospholipid bilayer without any kind of help. So you will automatically be able to move and so we see oxygen gas molecules are um, lipid soluble, so they can just move directly through that phospholipid bilayer. And we see that carbon dioxide gas molecules are also uh, lipid soluble, and so they can move directly through that phospholipid bilayer. And so we can describe this as being semi-permeable or selectively permeable, meaning that if you're lipid soluble, you can cross through without any assistance, but if you are um, polar or have a charge, if you're ionic, uh, an ion, then, then you cannot cross without some kind of help. Okay, so we've mentioned that we have our um, phospholipid molecule as part of the semi-permeable structure of our cell membrane. And then we have our cholesterol molecule, which is a lipid embedded into these fatty acid tails which is really helping to stabilize the structure. Otherwise, it'd be like really, really fluid and there wouldn't be a lot of uh, rigidity to that cell membrane in the way that we need. Okay, so we don't just have phospholipids and cholesterol as part of our structure. Of course, we've mentioned also our protein molecules. And so here we're seeing the role of our protein molecules forming channels. These channels are basically selective little doors um, for the cell membrane. And so what we'll see is because protein structure is so specific, our protein channels can be very specific. So they can have one portion of the molecule that is um, hydrophobic, and so that's how it can be embedded here in the middle of the phospholipid bilayer, but then on the inside, it could be 
um, hydrophilic and maybe just allow water to move through or just allow sodium ion to move through or just allow potassium ion to move, move through. So what we'll see is that anything that was um, polar or um, any ions have to have some kind of protein channel in order to gain um, access, in order to move in or out of the cell. And so each protein channel is usually specific for a certain type of polar molecule or certain type of um, ion. Proteins are not just going to form channels in the cell membrane. We will also see them hanging off the outside of the cell, um, acting as little name tags that's allowing our cells to recognize which belong to our body and which are foreign. So our little glycoprotein molecules, you can think of them as the little name tag markers hanging off of your cells. Um, so they're gonna be involved in the self recognition and also involved in our immune response as part of that. And then we can have proteins that are anchoring our cells. So they're gonna extend from the outside through the um, cell membrane and into the internal part of the cell. So they might be helping to anchor this cell to another cell when we're forming tissues, or we might see that they're anchoring to what's called the cytoskeleton, which is uh, a network of protein fibers inside of the cell. So this can anchor the cell membrane to the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton then can be anchoring other organelles inside of the cell. And so we can just have this idea of proteins as anchoring um, in that cell membrane, anchoring this cell um, to other cells, anchoring it to other protein fibers, either inside or outside of the cell. And then we also have our glycocalyx, which I've mentioned. The glycocalyx is usually composed of um, carbohydrates and lipids. So we have this name glycolipid um, to refer to these molecules that are hanging off of our cell membrane. So these are again on the outside of the cell. The glycocalyx has lots of jobs. So let's take a look at those. One job is lubrication. So we're gonna see that these glycolipids are going to keep um, us from having a lot of friction between our cells. We can see glycolipids involved in the protection of the cell. Again, these are also involved in cell recognition, so it's not just your glycoprotein that's serving as a name tag. The glycolipids can be involved in communication. They can also be involved in anchoring, so this can be, again, um, how our cells are anchored to other cells in order to form tissues. And we can see those glycolipids involved in, um, or the glycocalyx involved in locomotion or movement of the cell. Okay, so um, takeaway, our cell membrane is composed of lipids, carbohydrates, and um, proteins. Our lipids are forming the um, you know, the basic structure of that phospholipid bilayer, that's lipids. Phospholipids are important in that semi-permeable nature of our cell membrane. Cholesterol is our stabilizer. Our proteins have roles in making channels, in anchoring, and in our self-recognition and immune response, those glycoproteins. And then the glycolipids, the carbohydrates and lipids are forming our glycocalyx, which has a whole list of functions here. All right, and that's it for now.